Hey there. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing again. I'm gonna talk some more about melanin. Hey. And this time we're gonna be talking about its effects on color. All right. Yo! And we're back. Now that that is over with. I don't know if I'm standing like in the center when I'm doing this. I just kind of like mm, top of my hands a lot. I don't know. Don't write me a comment. It's fine. If you think it's funny or educational, that's all I care about, right? Um, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about this. So, melanin and color. Oh my goodness, right? Um, this is going to be kind of complex and I hope you can keep up with it. Um, if not, leave me some comments down below and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Okay. Um, what is color? Color is a little bit of energy that's moving some different speed and uh, as it interacts with an object, some is absorbed, some is refracted, refracted, some is reflected and whatever eyes pick up goes to her brain and says, ah, that's purple. Right. <laughs> Realistically, it's going to be expressed in different levels of energy that's being... <coughs> oh my god, the strip is killing me. That is, um, that is that, you know, being sent across space and time. Right? Things are moving in an infrared spectrum are really long periods of repeat between their amplitudes. And things that are ultraviolet are moving real quick. There's a short period of time between those, right? Which is some physics stuff. Maybe we could do some of the physics of it sometime. I'm, I'm kind of being like about that right now because we're actually working on some really heavy physics stuff and my brain is literally fried. So we're not going to get too much into the physics of how particles interact with things and if they're moving away or towards you or any of that other fun stuff. Right now, let's just think about color in a bottle, right? When we go into a bottle of tattoo pigments, a... Hey. <laughs> When we think about color, we're always thinking about those true tones that we see, right? And what that's going to be is somewhere inside of that aspect of visible light that our eyes are able to define and see and understand our world uh, is, is just going to be like that. That's just what it is, right? We find something at X amount of frequency, you know, 4K or whatever the hell it is, right? Then we're going to say, oh, that's green which is awesome. And if it's got more than that, it's purple or it's red or whatever, right? That's all it is. But color is not just simple as that, right? Like more often than not, when I'm, when I'm talking to people about like a digital and analog color palette, this is what I'm gonna be talking about right now. And melanin has a huge part in how we're gonna understand and interpret those things once the tattoo is in the skin, right? So if we think about our base colors in one way, right? And we have from our violets to our reds and we've got our green somewhere in the middle, boop. That's great, because that's just a true color. That's like an RGB color palette, right? Where you can like mix these colors together at different values and it'll make different colors, right? If I mix a red and a yellow together, I get orange. That's what we're talking about with this. Now, in real life, there's another axis that this goes on, right? It becomes 3D. <laughs> And I'm being like really dramatic today. Maybe I've had too much coffee. Um, anyways, when we think about this, we have our dark values and our light values, right? And what do we mean by this? This is how much absorption, right? We'll go on the negative side of this. How much absorption of that volume of light that's being expressed across whatever the hell we're interacting with is being impacted on that color. And the light is how much more of an, how much more pure light, which is like white light, is going to be expressed on that color as well. How bright it's going to be, right? So inside of like the standard RGB line, right? Which is not, I know that there's people who are going to be like, actually, when you do this, it's going to be if it's backlight or front light. I understand, but I'm just doing this as like this is this is tattoo related, not TVs. So um, even though we're stealing the the you know labels and stuff, which is fine. I'm not appropriating it in a negative way, I don't think. But if I am, let me know. I'm sorry, tech people. I don't know. Um, we start moving it into these, <laughs> this other spectrum. We're going to be getting into our CMYK, right? 
profiles where it's not just like I have a true blue. Now I can have a light or a dark blue based on how much of the energy expressed of that blue is being added or removed, right? So light is not just like a single positive thing. It's gonna come in volumes, right? Because it's not a single particle that's interacting with something and bouncing off. We see it, we're seeing a ton of stuff hit all at the same time. And it's bouncing back and the volume in which it's bouncing back is gonna give us that amount of vibrance here, how bright that something is. Now with tattoo pigments, we control this or modulate how light or dark something is by using white, right? Which is going to increase the amount of white light that's available for that pigment that's there and making it appear brighter, or we can decrease it by adding black. Now this is kind of weird because if we think about these in and of themselves and we add them by themselves to a true color, we end up muddying up the color, right? If we just add white to something, it will turn a red into a peach not really a light red, right? If we add black to a blue, it'll turn it into like a really deep navy instead of a standard dark blue, right? So how do we control that? We're adding different volumes of white and black together. <laughs> it's actually gray. Gray, right, is some mixture between white and black that is gonna create a specific volume of, of this sliding scale of light and dark. If you mix a little bit of white together with a whole bunch of dark, it's gonna move it back and forth along that scale, influencing whatever that color is that we're trying to modify, making it appear lighter or darker. This is really complex stuff, right? And this pigment chemistry can get really, really, really crazy. But this is why a lot of those companies are saying, especially with some of the pigment bands that have gone on, like this is gonna mess up all of our stuff. And the reason why is because they understand extremely well how that base tone that they have is going to be affected by those volumes of grays that they're using. And rather than reformulate the entire thing, which would take time and money and maybe hurt their profits, they just wanna stick with the stuff they've got. Simple, right? So, if we take the same thing, all we've been talking about right now is highly complex thing about mixing colors together to create specific tones. And then we start thinking about how melanin is actually gonna directly affect color. This becomes way more complex, right? Because we have a bottle of pigment that has, oh, I don't know, 5% of it is white, 7.25% of it, is black. Uh, we've got uh, 23.5% uh, is red, whatever, and we'll go light. And we've got 2.3%. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we start doing all this stuff. We're like, oh my God, we have all this stuff and it's making it so we have this very crisp kind of like candy apple red color. It, that's great, right? And it looks like that in the bottle because what's happening is the light that we have out here that's shining onto it is uninterrupted, right? We're getting a clear view through a clear bottle, which realistically like pigments should not be stored in clear bottles, but what can you do? Uh, and what's happening is whatever that mixture is that we've got in our bottle is gonna be coming out, that's a squat bottle, whoop, into our eyes, right? And there's nothing between it. So we're seeing it, well, I mean, there is things between it, just physicists bite me, I understand. But there's, <laughs> there's not a lot obstructing it, so we're able to see the color in the most purest sense that, that we can, right? Now, if we take that and we add in an extra step before it gets to our eyes, where we go from this into melanin, <laughs> and then from melanin it goes to our eyes, right? Whoop, beep. Um, that changes things so much, because what does melanin do? it absorbs energy, right? And we know from what we were just kind of, you know, briefly going over that pigment requires energy to look a specific way. So the darker that your skin is, the more energy is being absorbed, the less ability that there is for the remaining energy to get through and interact with whatever those complex mixtures are effectively enough to be able to pass the same amount of energy back through the skin so that you can actually see what's there. There's a cool test you can do with, especially if you have darker toned skin. 
the standard volumes of light that we have are comfortable for our eyes, right? But it's not the brightest light that we got. <laughs> to test colors, if you have some colors, maybe you can't see them very well, go find a brighter light source and literally shine it on you. I'm not saying go take a magnifying glass and burn yourself, that's stupid, don't do that. Just go grab your cell phone, kick on your light, and shine it on your tattoo and see if you can see the colors more effectively. What that's gonna do is it's gonna show you that the total volume or quantity of light that's actually be coming through whatever that pigment is that's hitting our melanin is going to increase. And when it increases, more light energy is able to get through, interact with the pigment that's there, and then come back through the skin, right? So how do we use this when we're tattooing? Simple enough. We've got to look for the complexity of mixtures inside of the bottles to understand how they're actually going to interact with different skin types. So if you have somebody who has very dark toned skin trying to keep to more true colors, like thinking RGB versus a lot of modulants inside of it that are going to modify its tint and tone, <laughs> that was smart. Uh, those are probably going to be more effective when we're actually dealing with those skin types, right? And if you have somebody who has very light toned skin, you can play with those crazy wild mixtures and have them turn out well because there's not a lot of including that amount of energy that's supposed to be required to make those colors appear the way that they do. Downfall is, like we said in the previous video, the lighter your skin and the more of those crazy things that they have in there to try and make a specific color, there's a greater likelihood that that tattoo pigment is going to degrade over time more quickly. And when it does, it's going to turn back to the color that has the highest quantity inside of it. So if you have a whole bunch of little bits and a lot of red inside of it that makes this dark red, over time, that dark red is going to become, instead of a uh, horror blood red, it's going to turn into dark red. <laughs> if you have a medium red, oh, dragon tongue red. <laughs> I don't know, it has all this different stuff, blah, 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 blah. And it looks so unique when you first do it. Five years down the road, it's going to be medium red. So if you're using 30 different types of reds to complete this awesome, amazing, oh my gosh, it's so detailed tattoo, 10 years down the road, you're going to end up with three values. Light red, medium red, and dark red. <laughs> if you have dark toned skin, you're limited to that as well, right? Because you can't put all those variations in, you're already doing the tattoo that way. Cool thing is, is if it's done well, it'll last longer. Hey. All right, part two done. Let me know what you think, like, subscribe, do all that other stuff. I'm gonna go drink some more coffee and see if we can do one more of these before we check out for the day. Anyways, it's Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.